That's better. Oh, by the way, George wanted me to let you know that he's at the Improv on Thursday night. So if anybody here is interested in seeing the real comedy hour. No, it's not a gay bar. Okay. <laughs> and secondly, I would like to uh, take a moment to thank Dennis Rodman for lending me his dress for tonight's <laughs> Hall of Fame induction. It's kind of amazing as I think about my time growing up in Far Rockaway, New York. I mean, certainly as a kid growing there, I never thought that the Hall of Fame was something that could be obtainable because at that time, there were no women in the Naismith uh, Basketball Hall of Fame. So when I was out in the schoolyards playing or in high school, it was just playing for the love of the game and, and getting out there and going after my dreams, trying to be good, trying to be the best at whatever it was that I really enjoyed doing. But I can tell you what, almost like it was yesterday, I can hear my mother standing at the corner just yelling, Nancy, Nancy, are you coming home for dinner? And every night my same pat line was, Ma, Ma, if you just give me a few minutes, we got one more game, just one more game. And that seemed to happen every single night. We'd finish playing basketball, and Danny and Scott and Barry and the guys, we'd kind of all head home. And then it seemed like the first thing we did was turn on the TV, Channel 9 for me in New York, and I would watch my beloved New York Knicks get out there and play whoever they were playing that night. I never thought back then that I would be studying the game of basketball, but certainly with those great Knicks teams and the players that they had, it was almost like easy just sitting there watching Willis Reed make a nice drop step to the basket or Clyde Frazier making a great steal. And then being in New York at that time and getting a chance to see the doctor play, it was a thrill. I mean, we used to sit there and he used to dunk over, I would say, Danny Issel on one particular play that I can remember. And then the next day, I would meet Eric and Danny and Mark and we'd go back in the schoolyards and we would try and emulate the things that Willis and Clyde and Doc were doing. And that was really the fun part. We didn't play for money. We weren't being recruited. We were playing for the love of the game. There were no trophies. It was just who could stay and who could play on this nine-foot basket that we had at PS 104. We called it the small basket because it was small. And whoever could dunk on that certainly had some bragging rights that day. I can also remember taking the train by myself at night to Harlem so I could play against the best competition because I always tried to strive to be the best at whatever I could be. And I was always told that the best players were at Rutger Park, and I certainly wanted to be a part of that. Those playground lessons taught me so much about life. They taught me about respecting people, working hard, being dedicated, never being afraid of any challenge that comes your way, and always giving your best effort. When I was growing up, I really didn't have a female role model at the time. And in 1974, I can remember going to a tryout for the USA national team, and there were 250 women in this gym at Queens College, and I thought that it was the greatest day of my life because I could go home and tell my mother that I was not crazy, that I was not just the only girl out there playing basketball. There were 250 other women out there with the same goals and the same dreams and the same aspirations as myself. I was young. We didn't have a lot of money. I came from a, a broken home. But basketball has given me everything that I have in life. It's given me my confidence. It's given me my self-esteem. It's given me the ability to share with teammates, to be responsible, to learn how to win, and also to learn how to lose. My passion for the game has given me the opportunity to play in college, the Olympics, men and women's professional basketball. The game has also exposed me to some of the greatest players in women's basketball. It has been a privilege to be able to see Lucy Harris play. It has been a privilege to be able to be on the court against Ann Myers. It is a privilege to have had Ann Donovan as my teammate in college and winning championships with her, our senior, my senior year, her freshman year. And I can't tell you what a thrill it's been 
to watch and play with and against the, one of the greatest shooters ever in Carol Blaszczowski. Now, you heard me mention one of the greatest shooters. You didn't hear me say male or female. The Blaze could flat out shoot. And there's a lot of opponents who she did that on. And I've had the chance to be on the court with great players like that. Without opportunity, you don't have a chance for success. I'm a Title IX baby, I guess I would say. Because without Title IX, without that law, I probably would not be standing here before you this evening. It's given me the chance to express myself on the basketball court. It's also given me the opportunity to have a lot of different coaches along the way. And I had a chance to tally some of those up. I've had 19 coaches since I've been playing basketball. And if I could just take a second, I would like to thank them for their influence, their knowledge, their sharing of the game with me. And I will be forever, from the bottom of my heart, grateful to those coaches. And if I may single out a few of them for the moment, Lavoise Lamar, my AAU coach growing up in Harlem, Billy Moore, my Olympic coach in 1976, Pat Summit, who has just been everything to me, a friend, a teammate, and uh, just a great mentor. Marianne Stanley, my coach at Old Dominion University, and I'm really proud of your new job at Cal Berkeley. Greg Williams for the Dallas Diamonds, and Henry Bibby, my coach right here in Springfield because I played on this court uh, where we are tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart uh, for helping me as a player, but more importantly, helping me as a person. I'd like to just take a moment to thank my biggest fan, which is my mom. She's really been there from the start for me. When it wasn't the cool thing to do <clears throat> a long time ago to be a female athlete, my mom was there and she was telling people that it was all right for her daughter to get out there and to play. And she might not have known really what the future held for women's basketball players, but I know that it was important to, it was important to me, so it was important for my mom. Although there were some occasions where I really didn't think she was much of a fan, like the night she punctured seven of my basketballs with a screwdriver, I happened to be dribbling the ball in the house that night because it was raining. She was trying to sleep. She'd go get a screwdriver, puncture a ball. She'd go back to sleep. I'd come back with another one, puncture a ball. I had about seven of them. I, I couldn't understand why she pulled me back. <laughs> All I wanted to do was be a good basketball player. But I do thank you, Ma, for sticking by me uh, through everything uh, when people, neighbors, friends were saying, you know, what's wrong with your daughter playing sports? I'd also like to thank my husband, Tim, who never got a chance to see me play when I was in college. He was only 13 at the time. I'm a little older than he is. But he's seen the pictures, and I'm telling you, you've seen the medallion. <laughs> Hopefully the 96 version is, is much better than what you saw up there. <laughs> I would like to, uh, to take a moment to just uh, you know, thank you for your support and allowing me to be everything uh, that I want to as a female basketball player and as a woman. Tim and I were teammates on the 1988 Washington General Harlem Globetrotter Tour. And really, despite what a lot of people think, and, and Tim, I didn't marry you because we lost 200 games, and I was depressed. <laughs> for every teammate that I've ever had, I thank you for helping make me better, for working towards a common goal of winning, uh, that excludes my general's experience where we lost 200 games. Some of my greatest moments ever, they came playing for Old Dominion University. And in this room for me is a visionary, and that's my athletic director, Dr. Jarrett. Because with you, Dr. Jarrett, you've been a friend, you've been a mentor, you've been a visionary for women's athletics, and you're one of the reasons why I came to Old Dominion University. Uh, everything you told me you would do, you did, and more. So I thank you very much for that. Basketball has given me more than I could ever have dreamed of. I am honored to follow Mira, Lucy, Juliana, Ann Myers, The Blaze, Cheryl Miller, and Annie Donovan into the Hall of Fame. And I really do accept this honor on behalf of all women and women basketball players who strive for excellence and want to be rewarded at the end of their career. I would like to quickly thank 
my family, my dad is here with uh, their friends, my mom, my husband, uh, my son TJ, if there's been a little boy crying and screaming and throwing food at you, it's probably my son. He's got Tim's good looks and my bad attitude. I would like to thank Andy Ekman, who uh, really championed my cause uh, in getting uh, elected to the Hall of Fame, and for everybody at the Hall, from Joe to Robin to Brian, Mary Ann Clay, Melissa, everyone who has made this weekend so special, and to my friend uh, Ann Donovan. I couldn't have had a greater person walk me down that aisle tonight, except Andy tried to trip me and said I didn't pass the ball enough to her in my career. <laughs> I'm only kidding. A a Annie, uh, I really do appreciate that. And a woman couldn't ask for anything more than to be inducted with these guys. I mean, it's like paradise. They're good looking, they're great athletes, they've got a sense of humor, and from the bottom of my heart, I am honored to be a part of the class of 1996. And I thank each and every one of you out there for being a part of this. God bless you all. Thank you.